Robert H. Jackson Center, and on behalf of the County of Chautauqua Industrial Development Agency, delighted we could have this august crowd here for this incredible luncheon with some incredible people for uh, covering a period of time which is the entirety of the county executive ship of Chautauqua County. How rare this is. What a moment. And so we're going to be looking forward to having a chance to pause, reflect, and celebrate uh, the accomplishments of those individuals as we have in person and virtually everyone in its entirety over this entire time of the charter. Uh, what's going to happen today is I'm going to call up Kristen McMahon, President and CEO of the Robert H. Jackson Center, to do a brief welcome. Then I'm going to go through a brief history of how we got to a charter system. And then we're going to be blessed by a presentation done by Joe Jirasi, which will be off to my left and uh, there as well. And then uh, we'll have break for lunch. And then uh, our esteemed leader, I'm required by my contract with the County of Chautauqua Industrial Development Agency to refer to him as esteemed Mark Geis, <laughs> to, he will take it from there. So uh, that's the fine print, but I, I'm required to say that. So with, with that in mind, I'd like to call up uh, the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Robert H. Jackson Center, Kristen McMahon. Thank you everyone for being here today. We are so pleased to host this group and as Greg said, this is such a momentous occasion to have the entire history of the Chautauqua County Executive with us today. You know, I only learned recently when PJ was the guest for the Turner Winter Series that not every county has a county executive. And so that was a new piece of information for me and that makes this even more interesting and more special. I want to, because I am contractually obligated, to use Robert H. Jackson's words uh, <laughs> today. And so I'm going to paraphrase an address he wrote about the county seat lawyer, which I think applies to all those who have served in this role. Such a man understands the structure of society and how its groups interlock and interact because he lives in the community and he can keep it all in view. The circle of the man is the whole community and embraces persons of every outlook. And I like to think that that is how the county executives approach their positions, approach their relationships with the community. And with that, I will turn it back to Greg. Thank you. How did this all get to this point in Chautauqua County where there was a charter? A few years ago, some of you may remember, we gathered upstairs and we had a wonderful Q&A with all of the six county executives and in the audience, George Barillo in waiting. And, uh, and, and so we thought it was a wonderful opportunity to get together now while we have this while, the, while it exists. Uh, at that time, I went through, and I'll do this very briefly, kind of this history. Uh, of this as well, and um, this is really written by, I'm paraphrasing, Helen Ebersol. Helen Ebersol, by the way, is turning 99 uh, this weekend, I believe, and uh, so for those who want to wish her well, she's been the historian extraordinaire uh, for Chautauqua County, but she wrote a, a, an article called Political Changes 1935 through 1978, uh, in the Chautauqua, history of Chautauqua County. Let me just hit a couple of these here. Chautauqua County government was organized in 1810. All positions, and Joe Jirasi was not at that first meeting, okay? I just want the, <laughs> just so it's clear. All positions at the county level were then filled by the Council of Appointment in Albany. In 1821, the body was abolished by the revised state constitution and county officers were thereafter elected. The governing body of Chautauqua County from its beginning was the Board of Supervisors. The structure of that board remained unchanged throughout most of the county's history. In the mid-1930s, the board was made up of 37 members, one supervisor from each of the 27 towns in the county, six from Jamestown, and four from Dunkirk. The chairman of the Board of Supervisors, elected from among its members, 
carried the heaviest burden for guiding and administering the county government. You walk by and you see the Hall R. Clothier name, and that he was the chairman from 1948 through 1962. At the heart of the county government difficulties, there was, there was difficulties, was the lack of executive management. A study of the county government operations was done in... Uh, and in 1972-73, it stated the root of the problem was just that there was no county executive. What was interesting that Helen dug up, and for those who are lawyers in the room, you don't often get a chance to pause and talk about Baker versus Carr. One man, one vote. Because that was the drive, as it turned out, for the creation of the county charter. What Hall R, just uh, for purposes of c continuing, uh, when Hall R. Clothier died in 1962, was followed by Richard Evans, and then subsequently Joe Girassi. It was noted that the Board of Supervisors was faced with that fact, and there was a lot of troubles as to the management with that Baker versus Carr, Baker versus Carr the distribution of the votes throughout the county to make it consistent with that constitutional. In 1969, it was alleged that our operating under the Board of Supervisors arrangement, which has been created really back to 1820s, there was a taxpayer suit brought by two town of Busti citizens, Joseph Jirasi and Dr. Glenn Ebersole alleging a variety of inequality among the county voters. Pomfret, with its population of 10,000, and Arkwright, having 700 people, had the same representation. Three years it battled away in the Chautauqua County Court Hall, and finally Judge Gahn, who's a New York State Supreme Court Justice, mandated that a reapportionment plan providing for 25 members, 12 district legislators, be put into effect on January 1st, 1972. On the first day of January 1972, Chautauqua County entered into a new transitional phase. At that time, there was a switch, by the way, of sort of heavily Republican Board of Supervisors to all of a sudden, based on the mandate, it became heavily well, not heavily, but uh, switched to the Democrats. As a result, uh, Joe Girasi, who had been uh, one of the co-plaintiffs, -plaint was in fact elected as its chairman. So during 1972-73, the, the Board of Supervisors were under a guidance of which they had to create a charter. There was a court order, and here's how some of the game rules were going to be played, according to Judge Gahn. It was in 1972, under the guidance of the Board of Supervisors, during this transitional period, that they created something under called the County of Chautauqua Industrial Development Agency in 1972. And Section 895H of the General Municipal Law says, for the benefit of the County of Chautauqua and the inhabitants thereof, an industrial development agency to be known as the County of Chautauqua Industrial Development Agency is hereby established for the accomplishments of any and all of the purposes specified. The creation of the IDA was 50 years ago, 50 years ago this year. And aside from everything else, uh, we have in, been intertwined with the Board of Supervisors who led to the creation of us through its petition of the state. And in turn, we were created, and in turn, we 50 years. And Joe Girasi was at the beginning of it as the chairman of the Board of Supervisors. In November of 1973, a general election was held. And at that time, on the ballot was the county charter. A local law that was, was approved by the electorate and took effect. This new charter took effect on January 1st, 1975. 
The following November 1974, Democrat Joseph Gerasi, the prime mover and most politically effective factor in the county government for the last prior 17 years, was elected as the county's first executive, Joe Gerasi. Now, Joe sends his regrets that he can't be here personally. However, he did take the time to create a video, a reflection, if you will. So maybe if I, you got choices here. You can look at this, if you look at this, or for those who want to spin around, you can look at that. And we'll have Joe's reflections. It'll take about 10 minutes. Ten minutes in and of itself by Joe Girassi is amazing. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Greg, for setting up this uh, historic event with my fellow county executive. Hard to believe that uh, 50 years have gone by uh, since the IDA was created. The IDA uh, was uh, critical in uh, attracting Cummins Engine uh, to uh, Chautauqua County, uh, among other things. It started with the story of a traveling salesman. He had stopped uh, in the town of Busti at a gas station that was owned and uh, operated by John Siggins during the uh, time that that tra the traveling salesman, who happened to be a uh, salesman of industrial product. He had mentioned that Art Metal was vacant and had been for uh, three years and they were uh, looking for an occupant, high level uh, industrial uh, owner. He, he mentioned that uh, to Siggins and uh, to Earl Lawson, who happened to be a town councilman, town of Busti councilman, happened to be there, he immediately called me. I was a uh, town supervisor at the time, town of uh, Busti. Soon as uh, I heard the news, I called a emergency meeting. They definitely indicated that uh, the board was interested. Uh, and I, by the way, I, I happened to have been chairman of the uh, county uh, legislature at the time. I had uh, wore two hats. Uh, the next morning, got a hold of Bill Miller, who was our uh, industrial development manager. And together we called uh, Cummins Engine to verify that they indeed uh, were on the search. And they were. One of the people who uh, came to Chautauqua County on behalf of Cummins Engine was uh, Craig uh, Colburn and the other was Richard Ellison, who was the plant uh, manager to be. He and others came to Chautauqua County and visited the art metal plant. And as soon as he walked into the plant, he and the others saw rubbish and dead birds on the floor of the building. And uh, Ellison said uh, to uh, Dave Dawson, who was then our industrial representative said, look, you get this place cleaned up in 30 days and we'll come back uh, to check it out. Dave Dawson uh, was quite uh, uh, creative. He uh, went to Maplehurst Country Club, borrowed golf carts, and, uh, wagons. In 30 days, they did, he and others uh, did clean up what was then uh, Art Metal. Any of you who lived here back in 1974 uh, know that back then that the, the bridge in front of or close to Art Metal was a rickety old wooden bridge that uh, w would not uh, really carry the uh, heavy trucks that were carrying the huge engines so one of the guarantees that the county made was that if the state oh, would not carry out its promise to build a driveway from Baker Street to the plant, Chautauqua County would step in their shoes and accomplish that, which uh, we, we, we did. But one of the things that attracted them uh, the most was 
our manpower training funds that would be paid out to the early employees uh, to train them in this new team approach. And that was a major attraction of Cummins Engine. After Cummins Engine committed to and, and then came to Chautauqua County, other industries felt uh, comfortable to either expand or uh, to uh, come to Chautauqua County and uh, set up uh, their business. Two of the exciting adventures that the county uh, undertook, establishment of a county landfill and allocation of a portion of that landfill for industrial purposes. At, at one time, we had uh, in Chautauqua County, 44, 45 open dumps from Jamestown to uh, Dunkirk and uh, other towns and municipalities. Uh, I can remember uh, attending a public meeting in Dunkirk. They had a, a terrible problem regarding landfill. As a matter of fact, they had a, literally a mountain building, rubbish and, and the like. At the town meeting, one of the uh, constituents came up with a plastic bag. He tossed that on the desk in front of the committee that was holding the public hearing. And in it contained a dead rat. And he said that this mountain of rubbish housed quite a few such animals. In Jamestown, I remember there was a constant burning of uh, rubbish day after day after day and you could see the smoke rising above uh, the horizon of the city. So the county landfill uh, served a, a very critical purpose. We managed to zero in on and close those 45 open uh, dumps. Another interesting adventure that the county undertook uh, dealt with the construction of a bridge across Chautauqua Lake. Anyone trying to get from one side of the lake to the other would have to drive up to uh, uh, Mayville and then around the eastern side of the lake in order to make it around to Jamestown. We did have some folks who opposed the program of building a bridge across the lake. The battle uh, ended up in the courts. Long story short, we did get the bridge built and it exists there today. One of the most bitter projects that we undertook was the sewer district. A group had sued the county to try to prevent it from creating the sewer district. We lost the first uh, case, then uh, we conducted another lawsuit with a different plan. The court did approve. You had raw sewers going uh, into Chautauqua Lake. The creation of the Southern Sewer District was of great benefit in cleaning up the lake. We, we set up rural health clinics. We had a doctor recruitment program. Uh, business extension services uh, was created. We brought uh, airline commuter system to the county, expanded the airport. Rural health clinics were set up in rural, some rural towns and we attracted doctors to those clinics. Yeah, I really like to bring in Bill Parmet's name. If it wasn't for Bill Parmet, I don't think we would have been able to commit many projects. We established the Office for the Aging. Sven Hamar was the first chairman of the Office for the Aging. One of the first projects was we built an apartment house for senior citizens in uh, Mayville. And uh, that was one of the first in the, the county. Clean, it was uh, attractive. It, it just led to more 
positive things being done uh, for the citizens. These were a few things we were involved in in Chautauqua County, uh, but uh, in spite of that, and in spite of the times when I received the uh, phone calls from constituents who, who were unhappy with our whatever moves we had undertaken, I thoroughly enjoyed my experience as a county executive, and, and I'm sure that's true of the other county executives here. Thank you, Greg Peterson. And uh, also want to thank you county executives uh, for uh, picking up whatever projects that uh, you felt uh, were appropriate uh, to serve the people of Chautauqua County. I'm not sure uh, Joe is on yet. Uh, he will be joining us through this uh, um, as a Zoom as we get started after lunch, certainly. But I wanted to, he set the bar very high. And the, his grandson put that all together, uh, Vinny Jurassi. And so it's a spectacular piece for those who've ever tried to do this. And I'm one of them. Uh, he, he set the bar way too high. I, and bef just prior to having lunch, uh, I'd like to read a note that I received from Dave Dawson. Dave Dawson acted as interim county executive uh, during a time when Joe had an opportunity to do something else. And uh, I just want to share this one paragraph. I don't have to, it's, it's reprinted in your program, but let me just put it on the record. Uh, taking over for my boss, Joe Gerasi, in 1983, was a complete joy and wonderful learning experience. I was Joe's deputy as well as the IDA director. David, as you may recall, goes founding administrative director of the County of Chautauqua Industrial Development Agency back in 72. We had a close working relationship until he left for a job with the first Governor Cuomo. I was a caretaker and had no intention except to return to the IDA as soon as the next election for the office was held. Jack Glenzer, uh, was elected that fall and took over the next year. I was pleased to remain in Mayville with Jack and became his deputy as well. During my temporary tenure, I prepared the 1984 budget, fired a top county department head for a questionable integrity, and prepared a list of position papers for the legislature to consider to bring change to the very structure of county government. The recommendations were, one, sell the county home in Dunkirk, Two, create a bed tax to raise money to clean up all the lakes in the county. Three, sell the county landfill to a private industry, all of which were summarily rejected <laughs> by the legislature. But it was sure a great deal of fun to watch the collective reaction. I left office with the one recommendation that was accepted, naming the Jurassi office building after the man who have given much, many a chance at having so much pleasure. And Thank you, Joe, and that's a note from David Dawson. With that, we're going to pause, and I'm so thrilled everybody is who's supposed to be here is here. Uh, that's an honor. Uh, how, one brief housekeeping matter. Uh, right after lunch, I will call everybody up, and then Mark Geis will take it from there. Uh, we're going to sit in order of your uh, uh, position. So if you don't remember where county executives, where you stand in all of that, look at the program. But Joe Jirasi, as you can see, is there. Fill in accordingly. This will be a huge test. I'll be anxious. <laughs> so, Ed, if you could watch the video while these guys try to figure out where they all position, that would be great. Afterwards, guys, uh, uh, I, because this is a historical moment, I want you to stay here for a second. And we're going to have you sign a lot of programs. You know, just for yourselves as souvenirs and for Joe as well. Then, for the, you know, the rest you can leave. Uh, but the county executives, uh, we are then in turn going to go upstairs and get a photo op. So that's the assignments. So I know uh, the mind, mind can only absorb what the rear can endure. So I thought I'd get it out now. With that, we'll pause and have lunch. So I think we're... Um, so I think we're ready to begin here. Um, first of all, 
I wanted to say what a privilege it is to be among these great men, uh, four of which, by the way, I worked for and continue to work for, PJ, of course. Um, it, it, was, um, it was enlightening when I got all of, all of their bios and I read about all the things that they accomplished and, and really, uh, really incredible. And they're all uh, should be applauded for what they what they've accomplished. Um, and also looking at all the challenges, I sent out actually a, like a four question survey and I asked them about, um, you know, what were their biggest accomplishments? What were uh, their biggest challenges? What would they have done differently? Do they have any regrets? You know, those types of things. And um, so I'm going to sort of be using that as a script today and, and, and talking to each one of these. Before I do that, I wanted to uh, thank the Robert H. Jackson Center for hosting this. I wanted to thank uh, Landmark for the food. It was excellent. Um, yeah. And I wanted to thank um, our staff that were involved in the, uh, the uh, program and the brochures, uh, Rose and and Jeanette and Jason and all the rest of we have an incredible staff um, and um, really really honored to have all of them or to work with all of them so so thank you um, uh, what else um, so, you know I, I was thinking that we would take about an hour here we might end up running over I certainly don't want to cut it short if uh, we're on a good roll I was, I was sort of a um, Worried at first about whether um, I could get them talking. I don't think we're going to have any problem uh, with that at all. Um, so, um, did I forget anything, Jeanette? Did I did I get it all? Okay. So, if you could, I, oh, two other things. Um, maybe try to be succinct in your responses if you could. <laughs> no problem, Annie. Uh, and and let's try not to be political. I don't know about that, but anyway. So let's try let's try that sort of the rules of the of engagement. Um, so, um, um, Mr. Mr. Glenzer, I know that I'm going to start with you, because I know that you were at the table for a lot of these uh, the negotiation no, negotiations going on with Cummins and others. Um, so perhaps you want to start off and talk about that or what other accomplishments that you could look back at and be proud of? Well, if I have to stick to my accomplishments, it'll be a very short speech. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I enjoyed being kind of executive. You have to be a masochist to decide to run. Uh, <laughs> It's, it, but it is a rewarding job. You know, I look back, I remember one day Sam Thorndike, who had a, a uh, PhD in economics, but the interpersonal talents of a three-toed sloth, he hated to <laughs> run a meeting. If I told him he was going to have to take my place, he would shake like a leaf in the fall. And but he came to me one day and said, Dr. Glitter, let me show you something. He said, our average home care visit, and he had it down to the penny, was $77 and some odd cents. And he said, the Jamestown Visiting Nurses Association, which had an excellent reputation, theirs is only $27. I said, Sam, that's simple. I'm taking this out of home health care. Well, let me tell you, when you try to make a change, it's not easy. I had those angels of mercies were wheeling these old ladies in and they were all pointing at me, <laughs> saying that because of that fat, ugly old guy, <laughs> you're not gonna get good service. Now, I wouldn't have done this if I didn't know that we had a combination of equally, if not better service. You know, one of those nurses, <laughs> I don't tell the story, but it's true, told those old ladies that we give you better care because we make more money. Now, some of those are a gap in that logic, which uh, you don't have to be an expert. But anyway, that first year we saved $350,000, and people got good care. In fact, when I had a problem later in my life, I used the JB and a They've changed hands, but they still give excellent service. And 
you know, think all of us have been blessed by having staff. Uh, maybe there's some exceptions, but we had very qualified staff. <laughs> and George Redisol was an excellent director of DPW, and he installed what they called this uh, non-destructive testing, where they actually they used what they did when they were looking for oil. They pound the highways, so like in that stretch, when you're going into uh, uh, Stockton, where it winds down through, they were able to just tear up the sections that were bad instead of tearing it all up. And so that saved the county a lot of money. And every morning, every Friday morning at 8 o'clock, I met with George Redesol because he knew everything and I knew next to nothing, but I didn't want to maintain the status quo. <laughs> and, and, I, and I learned it. In fact, George and I to this day are friends. I, I got a lot of support. I had talented, <clears throat> that, well, we hired Mr. Goodell here, our representative. And I have to say this, over the years, and then I'll give up some time here. Over the years, I've been very, very proud that the county legislature, regardless of whether the, who was in, in charge, is one of the last vestiges of civility in government. Here, here. You know, you, you look, I, I was very proud when the Republicans with a, like a 14 to 5 a majority appointed a Democrat, Mr. Navarro, because he was best qualified. Normally in politics, that doesn't happen. Because, you know, I don't know what the, the being a chairman pays now, but it pays extra. But, you know, our, our legislature had the foresight and put the good of the county ahead of politics, and they made Mr. Navarro, who I don't know, I mean, except from the papers. But I, I knew that he was the best qualified, and so I continue to be very proud of the fact that Chautauqua County Legislature and government represents our people well without embarrassing anybody. Thank you. Uh, I've, you know, over my career in politics, one of the things that blessed me was the number of people that for no, nothing other than wanting to try to make the county a better place and not everybody agrees that elected me. As the county executive did that, but at least people came out of the woodwork and helped me. I remember Mike Sullivan, who's now a judge, called me for my first campaign. He said, I'm just getting out of law school. I want to work on your campaign. And uh, of course, then he, he has worked his way up to being, being a, uh, a judge. All in all, I have to say this. Being county executive is hard work. I think you owe all of these guys, maybe not me, but these guys, thanks for, when you're county executive, if you have any sense of responsibility at all, it's a hell of a hard job, but it's gratifying. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Glenzer. Thank you very much. Um, Assemblyman Goodell, I know you talked about um, the fund balance that um, you increased. Uh, from 500,000 to over 18 million in the economic development fund you created, cu cutting county taxes. Do you want to talk about some of those uh, those accomplishments? As you may have figured out from the lineup here, I follow Jack Lenzer. <coughs> and um, I had to talk you into it. <laughs> <laughs> And so, uh, Jack, I'm sure has long since forgotten this, but uh, when I was running, he said, Andy, I've got good news and bad news for you. This is when I'm running. He said, I'm presenting a budget that's going to have a tax cut. That's going to be a great help for you. Uh, the bad news is you're going to have to figure out the budget when you get in. <laughs> <laughs> and Jack left me something that was uh, a lot more valuable uh, than the budget. And uh, that is, he left me with an incredible group of department heads. And no one that I've ever met before or since had the skill in hiring department heads. So our finance director, 
you know, MBA from Harvard, retired from running Amico's operation in Saudi Arabia, was bored. We bring him in. One year he, he made us like three million dollars in the stock market, in the bond market, at a time when our tax levy was 32 million. At one point, almost every one of our department heads was either the president or vice president or in the top of their statewide association from Chautauqua County. Um, and you saw that in the results. So for me, uh, one of the most rewarding aspects, it was like riding a wild stallion in the sense that we were going places that were really fast and I wasn't really uh, fully in control uh, and the department heads were driving, driving that progress. Uh, it was really exciting. And just to give you an example, in 1992, oh, sheesh, that's a few years ago. <laughs> so about 30 years ago, uh, the state was going through tough financial times, and um, they cut our funding substantially in the middle of our year. And, um, and it just wrecked havoc to county budgets all across the state. And I started meeting with the department heads weekly or biweekly and said, guys, let's see what we can come up with. And uh, it was phenomenal. When I say they cut our budget, we were facing about a 9 to 10% shortfall. And we ended the year in black. And uh, in the late fall, uh, the New York State Association of Counties called for, uh, you know, they have an annual meeting. And um, I sat down, it took me a few days, and I typed up just a one or two line description of the budget changes we made to come in the black. NYSEC um, took our uh, memo and published it. And so I wasn't that popular that fall because I went and all the other uh, elected officials were bellyaching how they had to use their fund balance. And I said, well, this is what we did. And it ranged everywhere from pre-sorting our mail so we could get a lower bulk rate to utilizing salt brine, which saved us that year over $300,000 over rock salt. It was just incredible. So at the end of the term, looking back, um, you know, heading uh, a group of uh, incredible department heads, almost all of which were hired by Jack, was great. We had an economic development fund, as I mentioned. Um, we sold our tax lien first in the nation, first in the state. We brought in, I don't know, six or eight million dollars net on that. We created a fire service enhancement fund. It's a revolving loan fund that's still used today. Um, a lot of exciting things that we were able to accomplish. And then one thing about um, Mr. Dawson. So Mr. Dawson would always call me and he'd say, Andy, uh, I'm working on these projects and I need X dollars for this, 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 and this, right? And then they were all great projects and well worth it. And one day I got a letter from Mr. Dawson and he said, this project's going great, this project's going great, this project's going great. And that was on the front page. And you know, having gone through the first page with no request for money from Dave Dawson, I called it a great day and didn't read the last page. And later that day, I got a call from Dave and he goes, <clears throat> did you get my letter? I said, yeah, that's great, Dave. Unbelievable. I mean, all these projects are going great and you, and you didn't ask for any money? And he goes, um, did you read the last page? <laughs> I go, no. And he said, well, when you get a chance to read that. And I said, okay. And I mentioned it to Rhonda, who was my secretary. And uh, she said, yeah, you should read the last page. <laughs> and the last page says, because things are going so great, I've decided now's the right time for me to resign. And I said, okay, Dave, uh, sorry about saying your letter was so great. <laughs> but uh, just one example. I mean, he did a phenomenal job for our county. Absolutely phenomenal. Thank you, Andy. So, so Mark Thomas, um, you know, you talked Thanks. about a couple of things that really stood out to me was uh, making the industrial park shovel ready because we're going through that process right now and I know how hard it is to get done and expensive. Um, the ice arena, the, uh, using the, the county's bond, uh, bonding power 
uh, uh, to facilitate funding in the ice arena in Jamestown, keeping SKF here and others. So why don't you talk about some of your highlights? I'll do that, yeah. <laughs> uh, before I do that, though, I want to recognize we have two first ladies of the county here. Barb oh, yeah. is here, and Elaine, my wife. You know, they're, they're the ones that got to pick up the pieces when we got home <laughs> and wonder, you know, what's left, you know, <laughs> and uh, we're our support system, and without them, uh, it would have been a lot harder job to do, and so uh, I recognize that. And the other person I want to recognize who's here, he's mentioned in the book here, but that's Steve Abdella. And Steve was the county legislature's attorney when I was county executive, and he had been Andy's county attorney, and he's been county attorney since. He's been involved at, at so many levels and helped move this county along for so many decades. We, we were in all for short windows of time, but Steve has prevailed over this massive length of time and has really, really been a huge contributor. Not only was he an interim exec for a while, but uh, Steve, uh, a perfect gentleman and wise counsel for all of us, uh, almost all of us. And I can't thank you enough as well for, for what you all have done. So it, the, the, one of the first things that we did when we came in, I worked with Dale Robbins on the Busty Industrial Park, and in, uh, that has that beer company there. What's that called? Oh, Southern <laughs> Tier. <laughs> Southern <laughs> Tier. That, that small beer company was was uh, not here yet in the county, and we got that. Uh, Dale and I worked together on that and got that industrial park developed. And and the other ones, we got se sewer up Airport Hill because they had a packaged sewer plant, and we got, were able to get federal funds in to get the sewer down to tie into BPU and uh, their sewer system. Uh, we had a closed steel plant in Dunkirk, uh, and we got it reopened working with uh, Governor Pataki's people, and that was a huge, huge lift and still going strong today. <coughs> SKF was about out the door. We found out about it and worked a special arrangement with them and kept them here in the county, is right. As you mentioned, um, and um, Mr. Penske was about to move uh, truck light out of here um, during our tenure as well, and we were able to work with them and, and create a, a means with job training funds and other things to keep them located here in, in Faulkner as long as we did. I know they're, they're gone now, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, we, we had a number, we microenterprise loan funds. We put a lot of money into workforce training and development. A lot through JCC, we created the, with them the, um, the Manufacturing Technology Institute that's still going today. Um, and we worked with the Southern Tier counties to reestablish the rail line that was closed down here that goes through Jamestown and got that reestablished. Um, so there was, a, there was just a number of projects that we were working on an economic development level, which to me were, were some of the most gratifying because it was about trying to keep people employed meaningfully here, gainfully employed here in the county. And uh, we also have one of the IDA appointees, uh, Mike Metzger, is here today, too, that we appointed. is still very, very much a part of our development efforts here in the county. Mike, good to see you as well. And your role at the college, too, these days as a VP of Finance. So you're still out there making things happen in Chautauqua County. It's good to have you with us. So yeah, I, it was just, it was a, it was a prime focus, because it was bleeding people, bleeding jobs, and that's where we put a lot of our energy and focus. So that's about what I'll add for now. Thank you. Uh, Greg Edwards. Um, so Greg, I know that you had sort of a perfect storm of events. Um, you know, there was a flood and there was a fire and there was the uh, re uh, Great Recession in around 2007, 2008. And uh, you know, that really, um, created a lot of challenges, and, um, um, and and perhaps you could talk about that. I know you also said about how you, when you cut a staff, it also put a you know kind of a burden on not a burden, but it made it hard for a lot of you especially to have to do all the work that needed to be done with a limited staff. So maybe you could speak to that. Well, it's uh, I'm thrilled to be here, and uh, uh, the gentlemen who've come before me and and, and after me have really set the. Uh, the bar very high, not only with their accomplishments, but their humor and their uh, keen memory. 
uh, for events. Uh, uh, Jack, and I'm pleased to call him Jack, well, we had a good conversation earlier, and uh, he came to me was when I was practicing law in Jamestown and, and really um, did more than uh, twist my arm. Uh, but he, he uh, uh, portrayed the opportunity that presents itself uh, in the role of county executive in such a way uh, that it was, um, it really uh, had the appearance of being something meaningful. And we all look for, for doing something meaningful at the end of the day. Um, Andy's been a, a tremendous uh, source of counsel before, during, and, and after uh, my time there. And I uh, constantly recall the, uh, the opportunity I had to work with Mark as candidates. And for me, showed his real character. Uh, and that we had a, a spirited campaign. Uh, and it was absolutely contested. And it was uh, something that uh, I think we both gave our absolute all for. And I was uh, very fortunate and blessed to come out a couple points higher, but uh, dur before the before the campaign, during the campaign, during my time in office, and since then, uh, we've remained friends, and uh, I've seen his, uh, I le I've leaned on him on a number of occasions to have that opportunity, and then to have Vince follow has been great. So I was kind of this, this interim point between the two, and it really was something that uh, was a unique opportunity, and and uh, Andy mentioned the friendships that uh, have been, have, were able, you're able to develop, and he stole my thunder with Steve because we've all had the benefit of working with Steve and, and many under many others uh, in that role. Um, it's a great job and uh, a terrifying one all at the same moment when you pause to think that you know 130 some odd thousand people are relying on the right thing to happen at the right time, particularly when things are not going well. And uh, looking back, as I did, to uh, try and answer Mark's questions, I was reminded of the flu, fire, and flood uh, that happened uh, all in sequence during the time I was there with uh, H1N1. Uh, it's easy to forget about that with this pandemic, but that was the precursor to COVID. And the lead up to that was, and uh, dealing with that was significant. Uh, the floods, you know, we, we unfortunately, I don't say regularly, but periodically have floods. This was one of our worst. Uh, we lost, totally lost over 37 homes, over 200 homes were damaged and it spread all the way from Silver Creek down into Jamestown, Frewsburg and Cayentone in that area. And that's really, I think, where county government shines the best. Because you have your towns and their villages and they're great leaders and they're great folks, but they're so limited in resources and scope. Uh, the state's great and the federal government's great, but they're so uh, removed from the issue, uh, it's difficult for them to respond. But I think one of the, the most pleasure I gained out of those circumstances of dealing one-on-one -on -one with a, a friend, a family person, a constituent, and really trying to bring the resources of the county to bear to uh, uh, take care of those issues. Um, the other challenge that was significant during my time in office was the uh, Great Recession. Um, and uh, the impact of that was, uh, I think, again, we're human beings are wonderful things. We can, you know, focus on the highlights and forget about the challenges. But um, the recession was the worst financial crisis we have, have up to this particular moment experienced since the Great Depression. And that had real impact on the people of Chautauqua County and real impact on the capacity of county government to deliver the work that we needed to do. But I think as evidenced by those before and after, you, when you're handed a challenge, you dive in, you figure out a way to get it done. And with the department head leadership that we had, uh, we were able to uh, deal with that loss. Uh, we dealt with the uh, state reducing $90 million worth of revenue by not agreeing to uh, renew our sales tax. That was more than just a blip on the radar screen. That was a major issue, but we were able to get through that. Um, and it's, it's all due to the team that uh, works, works around you, and I was thrilled, uh, thrilled to do that. Um, it was also a time uh, when uh, the uh, Internet and its impact on politics was really uh, making a transition. The beauty today is, is that if you make a comment, you have to disclose who you are. Uh, unfortunately, there was a period of time when that was not required. Uh, and I think the, that evolution has been uh, very helpful. Um, and the, and uh, despite that, I think your comment uh, about uh, uh, politics not being the first and foremost choice of the people of Chautauqua County has been a great benefit to the people of Chautauqua County. And I was thrilled to uh, work with and, and, and uh, wrestle with Keith Alstrom, you know, one of the, in my personal opinion, one of the best politicians 
uh, that the county's ever seen in, in understanding what it takes to move an issue forward and uh, uh, really champion a cause. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, I liken our relationship to be like a Looney Tune car uh, cartoon where the, the coyote and the sheepdog uh, see each other on the way in and say, hey, Bob, how you doing? Hi, Sam, how you doing? And then uh, I do what needs to be done to advance the issues that you need to advance. And at the end of the day, uh, wish each other well and, and go from there. But uh, I've got a great uh, uh, memory of the friendships I developed. Uh, I learned a, a tremendous amount. You can't be involved in uh, an organization that has that many moving pieces and that many challenges and not learn a great deal. Uh, and uh, the friendships, uh, although at the end of the day, uh, have always been the most important. That's what carries you through uh, having to walk through the county home with the uh, 254 uh, employees, many of whom dressed in their bright green shirts, uh, contesting the uh, push to have that uh, facility transfer from a county-owned operation into a private sector uh, operation, but you do what you have to do. And it's, it's not something that you look forward to, but uh, with the help of the people around you, you do the research, you find out what needs to be done, and, and that's a leader's role is to advance. Uh, well thought out, well designed uh, processes to improve the lives of the people you're charged with representing. So we, so you do that sort of thing. But all in all, it was I, I really enjoyed the experience, and uh, uh, I'm thrilled with the folks that have come before me and those that have come after me because that's where the some real uh, opportunities have been uh, taken advantage of. Vince, yeah. <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I was on the county legislature, um, and I kind of enjoyed that. It was my first little time in uh, politics. I ran unopposed and won, so that was a good thing. <laughs> <That's a plus. laughs> yeah. But during that time, uh, with the two years on the legislature, um, with some of the uh, initiatives that uh, Greg had was trying to get done, I got to the point to where I said, you know, I really care deeply about some of these challenges and I want to make sure that uh, we can follow through. I, I tell a lot of people one of the most difficult things about being in government is getting it over the finish line. Um, you work at it, you work at it, you talk about it, you plead, but does it ever happen? And so. Uh, when I was approached uh, to run for county executive after Greg was uh, uh, ready to retire, I thought about it and I made the decision to do it with a commitment from my wonderful wife that um, I would give it everything I had because I wanted to get some things over the finish line. Um, they were challenges for sure. Uh, one was, as Greg mentioned, the county home. I was convinced that the county home operation did not belong in government. It could be a private run operation and it would significantly improve our financial picture. Uh, but oh my goodness, dealing with the people, the staff and the residents, I really had my hands full. And to me that was the most personal thing in government when you really get down to it and start talking about people's employment, uh, how the senior citizens would be treated. Um, the person that is going to purchase this, is does he really have the interest of those seniors at heart? Because ultimately, at the end of the day, I had to look myself in the mirror and say, boy, are, you got a lot at stake here, and, and you better be right. So um, thankfully, we did have the right uh, person involved. Uh, we are mentioning Steve because Steve and I spent many, many, many hours on a lot of things. Uh, Steve's foray was to just be quiet, let me talk, and get done. And then, and then finally, he'd say, OK, have you thought about this? <laughs> no, I haven't. OK. <laughs> so Steve was a master at guiding us to the right decisions with the uh, with the county home and we um, we were successful with that. Um, I was also convinced that the blend between property taxes and sales taxes was not correct. We needed to uh, increase sale tax so we could lower property tax. That really came to my um, forefront when I talked to a lot of seniors, a lot of people on fixed incomes, businesses, 
you just can't keep boosting property taxes. And uh, there were always these financial challenges, but I was convinced that that was the right way to go. That took some tenacity. Again, it also took a bipartisan legislature uh, to convince and persuade people, and we finally were able to get that adjustment. And uh, I just marvel at the financial picture of the county today uh, and going forward. And that was always my concern. We may be okay with a budget today or this year, but what about five years from now? Is there that cliff that we're going to fall off? And uh, I was really focused on a long-term solution um, to get that done. Um, and speaking of the legislature, um, as Jack said and others, probably the thing I'm most proud of is uh, the quality and the cooperation. Yes, the debate, but the bipartisan work on that legislature was incredible. Um, I enjoyed it tremendously. Chuck Nazaro, um, who is a financial guy, very good, was one of my real consultants, real advisors that I really listened to. And being a Democrat, um, you know, people would sometimes say, well, how do you know Chuck isn't? Boy, he was a smart guy. The other benefit I had in that legislature was um, I think I recruited him, but clearly the smartest guy in the room is Pierre Chagnon. <laughs> Pierre's hard work, dedicated attention to detail uh, is unsurpassed. And together, uh, those two with others um, have formed a legislature uh, that is rock solid and a true, um, truly a, a great asset and I'm forever indebted to that. One of the hardest things about Pierre is, you know, when you're the county executive, you ought to have the answers, and you ought to be right. And Pierre oftentimes had a better idea than mine. And uh, I had to go home and, and just deal with that and finally do it Pierre's way. But I, I did get it done. Uh, it was just hard, and usually the reason why he was right is he knew the numbers and paid attention. The other challenge I had was, um, and Greg had worked on this, the North County Water District, bringing people together, you know, this cooperation, this North-South County, this deal with uh, shared services and consolidation. I was convinced that I could make some of that happen. And so I got involved deeply with the North County Water District with the city of Dunkirk. I, I tried the village of Fredonia, boy, I tried hard. I tried some other towns, and we were able finally uh, to get 90% of the way. We weren't able to get Fredonia on board, but um, I was very, um, very, um, I guess I, I felt very good about the accomplishment to be able to bring people together to see a better way instead of, you know, two water plants. We can do this with one water plant. We don't need all this other expense. Uh, but boy, that takes persuasion. I had one campaign thing, and I talked about persuasion. I was laughed at. Oh, persuasion. But you've got to persuade people. You've got to bring them along. The final thing I would say is during my time, um, coming from the military, uh, first of all, in the military, if you were a commander or you're in charge, you're only there for a limited time. I really only wanted to do this for one term. I believe turnover was critical. But I also believed that though people, the 3,000 people in county government, the department heads, were really, really important. Um, as I went around, Mark Thomas had a reputation of being able to connect with those employees, with those people very well. And I admire that. And I, uh, I talked to Mark a couple of times about this, but I made my commitment that I really wanted to, to be there for the employees and to be visible and to talk to them and to listen to them. So we got a couple things done, adjusted some work hours, uh, got the union contracts done. But um, man, I felt like those 3,000 employees were critical. Not all of them liked me, I got that, uh, but um, they were really important. And so I did spend a lot of time with them, sort of like the military days with your troops. You know, you, you've got to you got to walk the walk with them. 
Um, the last thing I'll say is that turnover is important. One example, um, in Ripley, they wanted something other than that porn shop out there. <laughs> and I was convinced I'm going to get something done, a welcome center in Ripley. And at the time, the director of economic development for the state said, Vince, you, you can keep hammering it this way. There's no way it's going to happen. The New York Thruway is not involved. We aren't going to do anything with this. You're wasting your time. So I sort of gave up on Ripley. Well, thank goodness the guy that followed me, George Brillo, said, I'm going to re-engage. <laughs> and it's an, it's, a, it's an example how turnover, I would have just kind of left it on the shelf. But turnover with a new guy coming in got it done. So that's my story. Senator. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, thank you. I think this is just a, a great event. What an amazing thing to have uh, all of these folks here, the entire history of the county executives here. And, and I, I'm proud to say that every single person at this table uh, has in some form or fashion been an advisor to me, given me good advice, helped me. But uh, my, the real mentor for me, the guy that really got me into politics is, is Dr. Jack Glenzer. Uh, when I was still in high school, uh, and his mother actually also uh, engaged me and really got me into politics and you know I was uh, working on his campaign when I was still in high school and he really was uh, he is the reason that I'm sitting here quite frankly so thank you Jack for uh, thank you thank you so much Jack. Uh, you know uh, I was I, I guess uh, the shortest term only two years as county executive uh, and uh, but it was it was a it was kind of a wild ride uh, not as wild as the ride that you had to go on but uh, <laughs> uh, 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 but the you know the first thing we did was um, I made the commitment that I was going to visit a hundred businesses in my first 100 days of office and uh, thank God for Rich Dixon and Mark Geis uh, and Dan Heitzenreiter uh, and you know the team in the county executive's office we got it done we got to 107 businesses businesses in the first 100 days of office. And it was important because it wasn't just a dog and pony show. We engaged. We set those meetings. Rich, those meetings were an hour and a half, two hours long. Uh, yeah. Uh, and we listened to them. And we wanted to know what their challenges were, what they thought their opportunities were. And we really uncovered something. Uh, because back then, the, the political rhetoric was, there's no jobs here. There's no jobs here. Uh, and what we found out was, there's a lot of jobs here. In the 107 businesses that we visited, we kept count. 767 open positions at 107 businesses in the county. And, and yet uh, we had a, you know, a traditionally higher unemployment rate. And what we said was, this is not about creating new positions. And quite frankly, when you spoke to business owners, um, the whole idea of bringing in companies, uh, giving them uh, you know, basically a little bit of an advantage and having them poach their employees was a problem. So it really gave us the opportunity to refocus on supporting not only our local businesses that are already here, but working on workforce. And that's really, I believe, when we started to change uh, and transition to the whole idea of we need better workforce development. I think everyone has discussed it along the way, but to take away that, that stigma that there's no jobs here uh, was really important. And what I had said, uh, especially visiting uh, young people in schools, um, you know, is that if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to, you know, if you really want to make a, a good life for yourself, being in the skilled trades and applied sciences, you know, the biggest lie that we told, and this goes back to when I was in high school, is that, you know, that, that somehow the skilled trades are only for the, the trouble kids. Uh, those are the kids that you send to BOCES and all that. That's not true. And the reality is, if you went to these businesses that I went to, the manufacturing facilities, the people that started out working on the floor of a manufacturing facility are now the owner or still opened up their own shop. I mean, you know, the, the CEO of Fancher Chair started out working on, on the floor. You know, that is a true career path. And if we really want to keep our kids here, that's the best path. And that was the message. We transitioned to that message, that if we want to keep our kids here, we want to support local uh, manufacturing and good-paying, family-sustaining jobs, we have to support uh, the, uh, the skilled trades and workforce development. And, and, and I'm very, very proud of that because it, it really, it was kind of a, a it, it was a shy thing to say. You know, a lot of, a lot of uh, other politicians said, you can't say we don't need jobs here. They'll kill you. If you uh, and the reality is we, we don't. We need to supply the people and the skills. And that is now the focus, I, I believe, uh, for us. Um, 
you know, I think the other thing that uh, was probably the most th th that I'm, I'm proud of, and again, it was a team effort, uh, was the whole idea of trying to bring together some consensus around Chautauqua Lake. Uh, you know, this is uh, this was another thing where uh, you know we had to take a big gulp and, and say, what are we going to do? Uh, you know, it was a a group of folks, all well intentioned, but not on the same page. So we uh, we really moved forward with what we called the consensus strategy. How are we going to get all these stakeholders around Chautauqua Lake to stop fighting with each other and start working together? Mm -hmm. And the key was. Uh, to hold the purse strings of the money and thank God for, for again for Pierre Chagnon uh, for stepping forward for all of the the folks that said we're on board with this we're gonna we're, we're going to we're gonna say either you work together and work on a positive uh, you know forward-thinking agenda where everybody's involved and everybody ha has a stake in it or you're just not going to get the money to do what you want uh, and that we, we got thankfully for the foundations we have a lot of our foundation folks here they stayed on board with that idea not allowing them to splinter off and we got uh, of the 16 stakeholders we got 15 of those 16 stakeholders to sign the memorandum of agreement that really led to what was one of the best uh, most successful most productive years in 2018 and 19 uh, to get Chautauqua Lake cleaned up uh, and uh, I think it set us on a good path uh, and, the, and, and it, now we have great things going on with Chautauqua Institution, uh, you know, bringing in uh, cutting-edge technology that is going to help us ad address the issues of, uh, you know, of harmful algal blooms and, 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 and uh, invasive species. Um, so we will now be, I think, a model. And, and that was one of the things that, you know, Pierre and I discovered when we went to Lake George. Lake George was like looking into the future for Chautauqua Lake. Uh, and we went there with Michael Hill and, and, and a lot of others. Uh, Michael also uh, really, he, he stepped forward and, and took a, a lot of flack by, by, by sticking with us. Thank God we had a lot of brave souls that said, if we're going to do this, we're going to have to take some risk, uh, and, and, uh, and political risk, financial risk, and we did. And, and it was, uh, like I said, I'm very proud of it. I'm glad that uh, that momentum has continued uh, under PJ. Uh, and uh, it is, it, I think it, it has been uh, a pivotal change in the way we think about things here. And uh, I want to also mention what others have mentioned about the the really non-political, bipartisan nature of our, our legislature. I mean, I only spent two years as county executive, but I was eight years as a county legislator. And uh, it was truly the first f question, and the only question was, is this good for the county? Is this good for our community? It wasn't about politics. Uh, and the, the fact that we had a supermajority of Republicans and uh, Chuck Nazaro was uh, chair uh, you know, uh, of the of the committee, uh, you know, the, the committee that really saw, uh, you know, pretty much everything went through audit and control. Uh, that was the right decision. Uh, and um, being in Albany and seeing where it's all politics all the time, and, and knowing that there's a better, purer way of of doing business as government, and that's county government. Uh, I'm very proud to have had that experience. It's really a reason why a lot of uh, folks in Albany don't get it because they never had that local government experience uh, and I think that that's probably the biggest lesson uh, and I've said this I'll say it again if state government ran half as well as county government this state would be in far better shape that's for damn sure uh, so I'm, I'm proud of my roots in, in county government and uh, I'm, I'm certainly proud uh, of what we accomplished in a, in a, in a uh, very short period of time and, and uh, I'm very proud to have had a great successor and I can tell you for sure there's nobody at this table that envies this guy uh, dealing with a pandemic. So, uh, you know, so uh, God bless you for doing that too. But thank you. Boss. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. <clears throat> My two years can be summed up in five letters. Uh, C-O-V-I-D. Um, you know, before we get started, it, it's kind of unique how, you know, you don't know where you're going to be. In March 23rd, I think it was, in 1988, I received a certificate from then County Executive Jack Glenzer and didn't realize I had it until my mom said, uh, you've got something here in a box that I kept with some other memorabilia. Nicely embossed, George and I said, well, we don't have that now in our office. Uh, <laughs> but it was really impressive. So it's, you never know where you're going to be. You know, Jack's been, and everybody here has, has been a great mentor uh, through my last two years in, in, in this office. But, you know, reaching out to Jack has always been very easy and, and uh, it's been an experience. But it's just you never know where you're going to be. So 34 years later, here I am in the same seat that Jack had. Um, yeah, you know, when I read Mark's, questions what was your challenges what were you saying i mean it was simple covid covid you know yeah. i had a real good answer yeah. um but you know it was everybody here you know 
Many years ago, before Andy became Assemblyman, uh, I went to a breakfast and then called out uh, Assemblyman Parmit, kind of asked some good questions. And um, Greg called me the next day and goes, did you ever think about running for the state assembly? So he got the wrong person because I'm thinking I'm some young guy from Lake. Yeah, why not? I'll take the challenge on. I'm, as an athlete, I've, I've stepped and competed against some pretty formidable people in my career, uh, not really knowing what it took. Um, learned a lot in those last couple, those couple of months. And, you know, to be standing and sitting in a room trying to debate Andy Goodell. Well, I stepped on the mat trying to wrestle Kurt Angle once, too, and I, I knew exactly where I stood. Well, much like sitting with Andy, you know, I, I very respectable and, and learned a lot from, from Andy. Uh, but, again, it, that question of Greg kind of put me in this path. I, I looked back a couple years ago, and I found it. I love to keep little things in it. It's a piece of paper from Vince Horgan. Would you co-chair this committee? And I put it in the folder. Boy, that was the first time I stepped out of just being a legislator. And uh, it's kind of where things started to go. And from those two questions and those time and time again, it just, you know, I took advantage of opportunities to advance. And, you know, like George said, take a chance and really, you know, enjoy it. Uh, being in this office, yeah, there's a lot that goes on. Um, Jokingly, in the last two years, I've been responsible for everything except the sun rising and setting. Uh, the lake levels, the weather, um, ex states of emergency, school closures, golf carts. What do you can you? I got to call at 1030 at night from Lori Cornell. You can use golf carts. Great. And I started texting and my wife's like, what are you doing? I'm like, you're right. What am I doing? It's 1030 at night. <laughs> but the golf course owners wanted to know whether we can use golf carts. And it was that uniqueness. Um, County, I've created some great friends across the state uh, as other county executives. And, um, you know, when this first started, Steve Aquario is the executive director of NISAC, and he would get these great motivational speeches, and we'd sit and listen to leaders across New York State who forgot they could mute their phone when they were screaming at their wives or children or doing the dishes or watching Jeopardy. And, and we're like, these are the leaders in New York State. Yeah, I'm out with this group again. We'll see what they have to talk about. I'm like, Come on, man. These are some pretty important people. But you learned a lot in that, that time frame. And these last two years have been a great learning experience. I guess the difference with me and everybody else is now I have my work cut out for me. I saw what was done before me and what challenges I have. You know, as Andy has said, and, and we're now in the transition of people leaving county government. You know, I, I feel very confident we've hired some great department heads. But the best part of this job was realizing that those department heads are there and you can rely on them. When COVID first started, I'm like, okay, man, what do they talk about? Jobs, economic development. Okay. The biggest black cloud for me was the budget. How am I going to figure this thing out? Because it just, no matter how I listened to it, it was constantly moving. But COVID came out. We were a lot first came up for air, I think, after the first initial shutdown. And I met with Mark and Rich. Hey, let me tell you about these programs we got. And everything's going well and things are I'm like, Okay, so the rest of the world didn't stop, which is good. And these guys had a lot of great opportunities, a lot of great things going. Um, so it's been an experience, and, um, you know, we're replacing people in county government. I've made some great additions. Our HR director has, has been phenomenal. Uh, we've made a change in our Department of Mental Hygiene. You know, Carmelo Hernandez has been great. Uh, so, you know, now we have a work cut out for us. My focus, along with everything else, is now – looking at county government to be more efficient, more effective. Um, you know, where do we go as people retire and these positions need to be filled? Um, the budget, man, I, like I said, that was the one thing that kept me up uh, before I first came county executive. And um, my our budget director's award-winning. In the last two years, we've won awards with three plus one on Kitty's ability to plan with our cash, our liquid assets. And the company that started created a model, which the highest grade was 95. Well, we achieved 95. And then this year, we, re we achieved 100. And Joe Rolson, who created this, the president, CEO of 3 Plus 1, said, we never thought anybody could get 100. Well, we don't know what we're going to do now. I'm like, that's great. So award-winning in many cases, and now our finances are award-winning as well. And, uh, you know, much like Andy, we're building up our fund balance and, and, you know, trying to get things corrected. I will say, if anybody knows Steve Abdello, very – as, as Vince said, I go in and assume my seat right inside, and I, I think Steve probably cringes more than everyone because you never know what's going to happen. And I think Steve is always very quiet, very stoic. 
I think I definitely has have opened up his emotions. This, yeah. I think there's some days he just couldn't believe what was happening, and neither could I. And I'm like, Steve, and then I'll just tell you, and like Vincent, he takes this deep breath. I think I've made him laugh a little bit more <laughs> when he tries to give an answer because it's like, that really happened? You know, and it was. It's been a unique experience. But, you know, I, I, before I enter my office every day is the last picture of this group that was formed. Um, and, and what an honor it is. And I, you know, as I, we have a new picture after today, I think I might put that one below, but, but I think walking in and seeing that picture of, of what the legacy I have to uphold, the great things that the people that came before me have done, and really, as they've all said it, you know, we wear this county on our sleeve. Um, you know, we are the ones who champion this county, and you can find a lot of bad things, but I'll tell you what, there's so many great things that happen. Um, our lake's phenomenal. Just George said, there's so many things that are just bubbling, waiting to explode right now. A lot of, a lot of great things, and I'm just excited to be part of it. And, and, you know, I've got four years at least, uh, and we'll see where it goes from here. But it's really been an honor to part of, you know, this group and only 10 of us in the county history. I think that's, that's pretty significant. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, PJ. So we got a couple of minutes left, and I know that Dr. Glenzer wanted to pay a tribute to uh, Mr. Drossi. But Joe Drossi, you know, I have used Joe as an example. So, so many people think that people only get into politics for what they can get out of it for themselves. And young Joe told me one time that his dad called him and said, you know, Joe, this is when Joe was thinking about running for county executive. And as you know, Joe was a very successful attorney. And he said, if I run for this and I win, I'm not going to be able to afford to send you to the kind of schools I sent your sister Andrea to. <laughs> and, you know, one time Joe and I were on the radio with Jim Rosselli talking about what it's like to be county executive. At the time, I was having a back problem. Well, about a week later, I get this manila envelope with a thick sheet of papers full of back exercises because his wife Mary was having back problems. So Joe Xeroxed all that stuff and sent it to me. Joe is an outstanding example of someone that was so loved Chautauqua County and he was a very, very good. I'll tell you this. If he had been appointed to the uh, governor's cabinet, I never would have run because who the hell was going to beat him? Certainly not me. He was, he, he was the best. And by the way, if you look around the room, you'll find that although we're all different, we all had the same trait, and that is that we were smart enough to marry someone. And if you knew my late wife, you know this is true. We all married someone smarter and a hell of a lot better looking. Thank you. <laughs> and my wife would agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that we'll, are we good with concluding there? Does anybody have any parting words, any other parting words that they'd like to extend? I'll, I'll just a quick one. Yeah, please. You know, it's, it's really special that over 50 years of governance is here today, Joe, remotely. But, I mean, it, it's absolutely remarkable that we're all still alive, still vital in our communities. You, there, there's 10 of us total, eight elected, and, and two others that have fulfilled the role in this county's history in 50 years. When you think about that, the responsibility that's on now PJ's shoulders, but each of us shouldered along the way, is absolutely remarkable and that this county has come through what we've come through together as a county over that 50 year span how life has changed and it's just this small group of, of folk here that that have had that opportunity to lead in this county at that time it's a great honor it's an honor that the people bestowed upon us and that each of us in our own turn in our own years and in after our tours of duty in this role have taken with the highest regard for the people of this county, every one of us. And it's 
why this county is as good a place to live and raise your families as it, as it is today. It's because of the commitment of people like us and all the lives we touched and how that rippled out throughout the community. All the people that, as Andy mentioned, were hired by Jack that worked for me, some passed on to Greg, yeah, yeah. Greg and, and still are, the Steve Abdellas of the world that just keep giving it all for the people of this county, as for Jack said, for the right reasons, not our reasons but for the right reasons. And we are so fortunate in this county to be you know, a part of this and the honor and why I think we all get along so well is because we realize we're just a handful, but we've had that opportunity given to us by the people and we cherish it all, every one of us. So thank you. Thanks well for doing this, Mark. Oh, yeah. Well, let's give, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Did you want to say something else? I just, no, no. I just put it up just, a, just a little sharper point on Mark's uh, comments, which were spot on. Also think about all the folks that have been assisting and, and representing along the way. And um, I think you'd be hard pressed, and I don't think I missed anything. I think you'd be hard pressed to identify any scandalous or improper activity that's happened in Chautauqua County since Joe Jirasi got us started in this uh, format and it's extended all the way through to PJ and it, and I think it speaks uh, uh, in even additional volumes to the quality of the people that uh, serve you collectively uh, in county government and uh, so I think that just that's not as typical as uh, uh, in, in other spheres or in other parts of government so uh, again just to kind of highlight exactly what you said Mark. You're, and I think, you know, what's, what's unique is what, what Mark said. If you take it a step further, you know, only 18 out of 62 counties have this form of government. Yeah. So it's significant. And when you think 18 million people in the state or 17, depending, I didn't check the latest census, currently 18 people are doing this job. It, it's, it's amazing to think that, you know, we're such a unique group. Um, you know, Chautauqua County, we're the only county that borders Pennsylvania on two sides. There's a lot of, I tell everybody, Chautauqua County is uniquely qualified, and, and I'm sure we all have experienced that. But, um, you know, it, it's just, this is something that you don't want to give up, and, and really excited just to be part of, of this legacy is, is great. I just want to say one quick thing. Sorry. Please. Please. <laughs> I was going to say quick, uh, you know, we all kind of stood on the shoulders of the, uh, of the person before us. And you know, I only had two years, and I could not have accomplished what I accomplished if, if I hadn't had a great setup uh, by Vince Horrigan. And, uh, and, and I'm sure would each of us say that about the, uh, about the predecessor. Um, and it just goes to show you that at the end of the day, this is a very unique form of government. Uh, and all of us took risk at one point. Greg and I were talking about this before. And other, the other counties that don't have county executives, uh, they, they don't... Uh, they have county managers, they have county supervisors that are kind of beholden to the legislature instead of having that relationship with the separation of powers uh, and an executive that in the end of the day drives the agenda and does take risk. So every single one of us took a risk in some manner uh, to accomplish something important and uh, that would not happen without the county executive form of government. So, thanks. Mark? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to wait. It's okay. <laughs> uh, and one more important thing. Each of us gets up. We put our socks on one at a time. We put our shoes on one at a time. And when we come home from a tough day, our wife says, take out the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Else? I better finish this Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, spring forward. That's it. There you go. Yeah. 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 Right. Finally. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.